give your place to this man. And then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at table. Huh. Pamela and Barbara, I know you always sit in the back because uh, you're the nurses here, but please, my friends, come up to a higher place. Please. And we have these lovely visitors from Bon Secours with us today. Would you, would you please come to a higher place so that we can have you as our guest of honor. And, and you know, George and Debbie, you always take too high a place. You need to come over here. Let, let Barbara and Pamela have your place. And you, you come over here. And uh, our volunteers from Bon Secours, look, we have these wonderful places right up front for you here. And, and Catherine and Renee, you need to come up and you need to sit with Barbara over here, okay? Come on up, okay? Oh, you're going to sit with Bar that Barbara. Okay, that's good enough. So, how'd you feel about that? It's embarrassing, right? Yeah, it was, are you embarrassed by all that, all that attention? I mean, you know, Barbara and Pamela are just such rabble-rousers around here. Was, it, is that, was that awkward? Yeah, it's awkward, wasn't it? And, and what, happened to, what happened to Debbie and George? Did they leave? <laughs> oh, they went all the way back there. <laughs> I thought maybe you left or something. <laughs> and how about you? How would you feel about being asked to move up front? Uncomfortable, right? Yeah. I mean, it's disruptive, wasn't it? And, it, and yet, that, isn't that just what Jesus said we're supposed to do? Wasn't, I mean, like, you're supposed to feel honored. And, and all of you, did you have put these in, folks in higher esteem because they came? No, you just kind of say, what was going on, right? Well, how can that be if that's what this parable that Jesus told us says we're supposed to do. You know, we're taught that it's a parable about humility, right? And in fact, I mean, that's Jesus's conclusion at the end for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted, right? And so, we're told then we go to take the lowest places, right? So that's why everybody is in the back, right? Because you expect me to come and invite you forward, right? <laughs> no, that's not how it works, right? And really, by moving people around, it really kind of disrupts the peace of what we've established here. So, how could this be a parable about humility? Or really, is it a parable about humility? Because in a sense, you really can't understand this parable without also attaching it to the parable that follows, in which Jesus says, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. 
You see, in the first parable, you're the guest. And somebody else comes in and mixes things up and either brings you forward or sends you back. In the second parable, who are you? You're the host. And true to form, Jesus says, as the host, you need to mix things up a bit by inviting people you would not normally invite. So, in one case, you are the guest, and in one case, you're the host. But what the two parables have in common is one thing disruption. In both parables, the order is disrupted. It's changed. It's mixed up. Whether you're the guest or the host, it starts off one way, and then Jesus comes in and shakes it all up. And if these are parables about the kingdom of God, as Jesus' parables are, then what Jesus is teaching us is that the social order that we've created here on earth is not necessarily the order that God has in heaven. And that, in fact, Jesus has come among us to shake things up, to change what we take as the norm and change it into something else. And so the humble will be exalted, and the exalted will be humbled. The one who is repaid will get no reward in heaven, whereas the one who invites those who cannot repay will get their reward at the resurrection of the righteous. But wait, there's more. Because so often when we hear parables like this, we interpret them individually as they, they apply to each one of us. So that I'm the one who's supposed to take the lower place. Or I'm the one who's supposed to invite the unlikely guest. It's all about me. 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 But if you pay attention to the way St. Luke introduces this story, we come to a, maybe a different understanding of what he wants us to get from these parables. If you've been following along, we're at chapter 14 in Luke's Gospel. And really, the whole story starts at verse 1. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. That's all you need to know as the introduction. Two things. It's the Sabbath. So what happens on the Sabbath? They rest and worship. Okay, Sabbath is the day for rest and for worship. And then he tells us, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. Now that's how we translate it into English. If you look at the original Greek, it says, Jesus went to eat bread at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. Now, who gathers on the Sabbath to eat bread? Is this a hard question? Who gathers on the Sabbath to worship the Lord and eat bread? Christians, yes, we do. The disciples, the church. So if Luke is setting this up to say that 
This is the day that people gather to worship and Jesus is with them to eat bread. Maybe he's telling us that the parables that follow are parables directed at the church. That the order that the church has established might need to be disrupted. And that Jesus is the one who has come to mix things up. So you see, you think I was just being ornery by mixing things up around here. You didn't know I was being Christ-like. You'll get over it. You see, St. Luke knew that the first disciples of Christ, just like the Pharisees of Jesus' day, were at risk of organizing themselves the same way the Pharisees and other religious leaders of Jesus' day did. The most important would rank themselves first. Notice how Jesus is at the home of a leading Pharisee. And everyone else would jockey for a position around them. And really there's a section of this passage that is omitted from our reading where we learn that the Pharisee has surrounded himself with scholars of the law and other Pharisees, with people just like him. So before any one of Jesus' disciples, including ourselves today, congratulates themselves for not being like the Pharisees, by placing this story on a day of worship, when people have come together to eat bread, Luke is giving us all a clear warning. Beware not to jockey for positions among ourselves, for we just might learn that our order here on earth is nothing like the order in heaven. Furthermore, if we are truly humble before God and one another, then we will include among ourselves in church those with whom we normally wouldn't associate. And here's the real kicker. When we think about serving those in need, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind that Jesus talks about, we tend to think about going out there, doing something nice for them out there, then coming back here and leaving them where we found them. The real challenge for Jesus is not simply that we go out and serve those in need, but that we go out and associate with those in need. We either need to go out there and hang out with folks who are different from ourselves, or we need to go out there and invite them to come into our midst. Either way, the whole point of Jesus' parable is that we need to disrupt the comfortable, familiar, social order we've created for ourselves and shake it up a bit. We need to engage those around us and make room for them at the table, whether that's the table of political power or the table of social resources or the table of the Lord whether it's out there or whether it's in here. Because when we just bring people our services or resources and keep them at arm's length, we never really engage them. We never really offer them the dignity they deserve. And what's more important, we never really allow them to change us. But when we associate with people, when we listen to what they have to say, when we are willing to go to them and to invite them among us, then we are truly mirroring the kingdom of God. Then we are affording them the dignity of telling their story and the dignity of being heard. Then we're not just giving them a handout, but a hand up. 
then we are humbling ourselves so that they can be exalted. And oh, how disruptive it all will be. Last week, I understand that Joel spoke to you about a new Pentecost. I still have to hear the recording myself. I hope you have it, David. You gonna post that? All right. But I appreciate him raising with you what I consider the most important next steps of our parish family. One, to re-engage one another and the people around us, and to really listen to what they have to say. Two, to reassess our ministries and ask whether they are oriented toward growth and inclusion of others. Three, to rethink the way we've been doing things so that we're not relying solely on what's familiar and comfortable to us. And four, to redirect our resources so that we can grow our parish and proclaim the good news. If you think what I did to you at the beginning of this homily was disruptive, well, under a new Pentecost, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> so it seems to me we have a choice. We can stay where we are for the rest of Mass and consider how disruption changes our point of view, allows us to engage people that we normally don't sit with, and simply experience worship in a new and fresh way. Or we can return to our typical pew, go back to what's familiar, and experience Mass the way we always do. No better, no worse than when we first arrived. But remember, Jesus comes to disrupt the existing order so that we may associate with those who matter most. Your choice. Amen. Amen.